good morning. The postman just woke me up and he gave me a package. And in this video, I'm gonna open this package and tell you a little story while I open it. So this right here, if you look carefully at the words that are on this thing, so here's the package, you can see it's quite big. Uh, on it, it says Memory Express. That's a store in Canada, a computer store. And uh, what this is right here is a laptop computer. And funny story to tell about this, actually this is my second time getting this exact package. And now I'm gonna open it for the second time this month. It's the month of August here in 2023. It's kind of a funny story because the first laptop I got was an amazing laptop, except that it was broken. It was so amazing it was broken, unfortunately. Um, it actually had a problem where it would not boot up. So what we're gonna do now is open this thing right here and see if it works. This laptop is a powerhouse of a machine. All right, we're making good progress here. We're cutting both sides. That ASMR of opening a box. Looks like our trusty knife served us well. Let's open this thing and see what is going on here. Just gotta make a little bit of room. All right. I gotta say the package looks the same as I opened it the first time, except it's the second time. So the main thing is we have a box inside of a box. And here we go, I'm about to show you the box inside of the box. Uh, Ta-da, and it's the wrong way. Here's the right way. Ta there you go, ta-da. There you go, can you read it? I wanted to say thank you to the postman for performing a very good delivery this morning. And I jumped out of my bed first thing. And here we are, straight into flow state. I was watching a video about that yesterday, it was kind of funny. They were talking about how uh, morning routines are like kind of a, this mythical thing that it's actually not necessary and the way to get into your true flow state is just to jump right out of bed and start doing what you need to do. Um, but then he was talking about how a lot of the stuff that people do for morning routines like, uh, you know, cold showers, um, meditation, they play into the recovery aspect of your day and that stuff is actually very important for being able to jump right out of bed and go straight into a flow state. So I thought it was a pretty interesting idea. So I might try that out. But I definitely understand what he means when he talks about getting right out of bed and feeling full of energy and going right into flow state. So let's open this thing right here in our flow state. So I'm opening this box and um, obviously it's pretty satisfying to open a box. Boxes, something about boxes are just uh, Awesome. First thing we have here is two things. One is on the right, there's this little brick, and then the other thing is in the middle. Um, so I'll start by pulling this out. And that's just nothing, actually. We can throw it, nothing there. Um, here is the machine itself. I'm gonna move that right next to me, uh, just to show you what's in the box. On the side of it, Right here, <sighs> tightly packed in, that is the power supply of the machine. And um, there might also be a pen in here, um, but there you go, AC adapter, okay? If you can see that, I'm going to put that next to me here. And then at the bottom, nothing, it's just um, a supportive panel. So actually I like the way they packaged it, they have these two supportive panels, one on the bottom and one on the top. Okay, so I'll put those back in here for now. All right, so here's the box for the ProArt Studio Book. And uh, I think it's about time we open it. Cut on the side of this just very lightly. Poke it with the knife, there we go. That's open, and we can take off the paper. Gently, of course. Very, very gently. Okay, so here's the box. It says ProArt on it and it feels like a very i guess sturdy but suede soft feeling box at the same time um, so what i'm going to do is open it because that's what boxes are for let's go ahead and slide this thing up so there's a cover right and i slide the cover off nothing on top just a little panel as you can see it's wrapped in a material uh, right here because uh, it doesn't come with a case, so just give, they just give you this material here. Um, 
and uh, basically there's the machine right there. Let's take a look real quick at the power supply. So this is a power brick and it's supposed to supply a lot of power because <laughs> this thing is a freaking powerhouse of a laptop. Um, at least last I tried it, it was pretty insane. Now, interesting in the power brick box, there's also an Asus Pen 2.0. And um, I haven't really tried this too much, but I am excited to use it. I wanna do some drawing stuff on the videos where I draw stuff uh, and annotate things on the screen at the same time as uh, recording things. So I'm gonna mess with this, definitely super interesting. Here's the power supply. And we're gonna take this out of the box because we do need that to power the laptop. And uh, here's the power supply. You can see it's not that big. It's not very heavy either. Uh, in combination, both of them at the same time, you know, it's a few pounds at least, but it's really not the worst that I've seen. I mean, it's probably on par with the power supply of my super old laptop, which is sitting over there behind me. Old laptop power supply versus new laptop power supply. The new one's heavier, definitely. Let's pull it right out. There you go. So there's a sticker that comes on the machine and uh, the sticker's in French, I'll save you the trouble. It's the number one brand of laptops for creators, basically, it's in French. And uh, there's some stats about things on here. It's the number one that the, the first one was just broken. It was so good it was broken, unfortunately. Um, so let's open this thing and um, I'm the first one to look at it, not you, of course. Everything you will be seeing on this channel will be probably produced on this machine right here. And you can see how reflective that screen is, don't you? That's an OLED screen. And it's a beautiful screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing in the power supply, leave it plugged in for about 30 minutes and turn it on and then see what happens. Cause the last time I did that, it didn't turn on the first time. So let's go see what happens. I'll catch you guys. Here's the moment of truth, guys. I am going to press the power button on this laptop right now. It has been plugged in for about 40 minutes and it should turn on immediately and looks like we got something. <laughs> That's certainly not what happened the first time I got this machine. So press the power button right away and it's turning on, which means that we're in business, guys. I'm pretty happy to see that. All right, so now we're probably gonna get a prompt to install Windows or to set up Windows 11. All right, guys, here's the machine. And what we have next to it are two fast storage drives that we're going to put in the machine now. Um, we're actually going to replace the drive that the machine comes with, unfortunately. Um, and uh, so the install that's on here is good for nothing anyways, so that's perfectly fine. doesn't really matter. Uh, it's pre-installed with all kinds of junk anyways that we do not need. The first step here is I'm going to be putting in this fast storage drive here, 4 terabytes. This is going to be the Windows 11 drive. At the same time, I'm going to install this drive right here, which is a two terabyte of the same exact drive. This one is going to be a storage drive, but at the same time, I'm testing some stuff out with this drive and I'm installing Debian 12 on it. Actually, Debian 12 is already installed on it. That's a Linux uh, operating system. All right, folks, we got to get some food in us before we install these hard drives here. So we've got three eggs on the bottom and some Kiwis. All right, my friends, we're gonna open up this laptop right now and this is how we're gonna do it. So this is a, a tool kit of screwdrivers that uh, my dad lent me and it's a pretty cool tool kit. So there's two particular screw uh, heads that we're gonna use in here. The first one is to open the top of the laptop. I'm going to use, I think it was a T3 or a T4 that is needed to uh, open up the little screws on the laptop. I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, screwdriver out Take the T4 head. I don't know if you can, there you go. It's, you know, you can't really see what's going on. All right, let's see if that's the correct one. All right, so it is indeed a T4 that you need. Now the two in the middle of the laptop on either side are a little bit longer. Okay, so this is easily the hardest part. So um, you need to now pop off the cover of the laptop, the bottom cover. So the way I did it last time was by using a guitar pick. It's not a super thick pick, but it's not a super thin one either. It's like in the middle. So maybe about, I don't know, one millimeter or something like that. You have to get some play in between the, uh, the body of the laptop and the, um, the outer little, uh, I don't know what it's called here, the outer edge, basically. There we go. So I got the pick inside the outer edge. So now I just have to work around that. And you basically want to work around the area here in the front at the bottom of the laptop um, until you kind of 
unclip it because there's these clips, as you heard right there. All right, looks like we almost pretty much got it, and there we go, we got it off. Yeah, so the trick is, I mean, obviously, use your least favorite guitar pick. I don't recommend using a guitar pick, obviously. But you actually have to pry it, start by prying it in the middle, and then you have to work your way around the sides a little bit. And then you'll loosen up a couple of the clips on one side, then you have to work your way to the other side and pry it off on the other side. That's the method I found uh, worked. So you start from the middle and you work your way around the sides. So here's the first hard drive. This is the hard drive that comes with the machine, this one terabyte. And um, unfortunately, we are going to be taking this one out currently. So I have to find the screw tip to take out the SSD. And if I recall, so this is an X 2.5. There we go. Just had to lean into it a little bit because it might be a little bit stripped. This is a really tiny screw. So I'm just going to keep it right there for now. And uh, here's the SSD that came with the laptop. Let's pop it out. It's a Samsung SSD. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, take my four terabyte beast over there and uh, pop this baby in. So we're gonna hook it up to the NVMe slot. Now this is the tricky part, which is getting this little tiny screw to sit back where it belongs there. So good thing is the screwdriver is magnetic. So now you just need a bit of a steady hand when you push it down. All right, let's do the same for our two terabyte drive now. Grab the hard drive right out of there. Well, actually we need to take out the screw first. Kind of problematic. You gotta lean into these screws a little bit for some reason. I got the piece of shit. You gotta lean into it. You're not supposed to have to do that. It should be screwed in a regular amount, but clearly this was not done by a human. It was done by a machine. And we'll pop it in the M.2 slot, second slot here. I'm gonna run Linux on this. Handy magnetic screwdriver. All right, we got our two hard drives in there. I'm just gonna do a bit of cleanup here, take a photo. So there's a moment here where I didn't record any audio. So this is an audio overdub here. So basically what I did after that was just inspected some of the components in the machine to make sure everything looked okay. Then I put the cover back on and put the screws back on and I booted up the system. When you put the back cover back on, it snaps back in. So you just have to put it back in in place and then make sure you're snapping it in place um, on either side of it and also in the center. Make sure it's snapped in uh, securely on all sides basically and then once that's secure you can go ahead and put the screws back in and make sure to put them in in the same order you took them out. And uh, Asus did it on purpose for some reason to have the screws you know at different lengths. So just make sure you keep track of which ones were the short ones and which ones are the long ones. So once I was done with that, I turned over the machine and powered it on and it powered on onto my second hard drive, not the first hard drive. So it booted into the Debian 12 installation because I guess it picked up that there was no operating system on the first hard drive because it's a brand new hard drive. And then what I did after that was I just rebooted it another time and I was able to boot into the BIOS because in the Debian 12 boot menu, it actually gives you the option for a couple of seconds to boot into the BIOS if you want to. So I created a Windows 11 boot disk on a little USB flash drive. And uh, I put that into the system and then I told it in the BIOS to boot into that USB stick. All right guys, so I booted into my USB flash drive that has a Windows 11 installer on it. And the only thing I wanted to share with you guys regarding this, if you do ever do a fresh Windows install on this type of new machine that has new hardware with these fast storage drives and it's an Asus machine, there's a couple things you, you want to do. The first thing is that's absolutely crucial is that in order for this Windows 11 installer to see the storage drive in your machine, you need to make sure to put the Intel fast storage driver on your boot disk. And uh, the way you get that driver, you have to go to the website of the manufacturer of your machine. So in this case, you go to the Asus website, you put in the uh, model number of your machine and you go and get the Intel fast storage driver and then you have to extract that to your boot disk. And now I'm gonna show you how to get that here. So I press tab three times and enter and I'm gonna type on install now. And um, let's wait for it to set up here. So I accept the Microsoft software license terms. Now I will select 
custom install windows only, you get the message, we could not find any drives. You have to load the fast storage driver. So let's select load driver. So I'm gonna click browse. The boot disk in this case is ESD USB. I'm gonna browse to that and I'm going to select this folder, which is um, where that fast storage driver is. As you can see here, it picks it up, Intel RST VMD controller. All right guys, so I'm going to select my four terabyte drive that my machine can now see. And then I selected next. All right, so we have Windows 11 installed here on our new drive and it's a fresh install. We have to install a few more things, including some Asus drivers, um, cause I don't think they're here. Um, we have to install a couple of the Asus programs that are responsible for managing the hardware on this system that control the fans and, and all that. That's pretty much it. And then we're gonna run a script that's going to remove some of the default Microsoft crap that's on this system. If you plan on doing this type of fresh install yourself, just understand that there's a lot of work you have to do. There's another script I'm gonna run on the laptop called Windows Decrapify. It's a PowerShell script and it removes a lot of the um, default Windows apps that come installed with Windows 11 that you don't need, that I don't need. So that's why I remove them. Um, anyhow, see you in later.